day my work was working with young people who were going through crazy hard situations and, and every day as I, as I continued to see the, the challenges of their lives, I, I started to see my inadequacy or my inability to see trans, transformation happen in their lives. And in seeing my inability to do anything, I, I failed to see God's ability. And as I worked with young people day after day and just witnessing the intense challenges that these young people were going through, I, um, I started to experience what a lot of people call compassion fatigue. So I was just giving my time, my energy, and I was just seeing no fruit and I was growing discouraged in, in, like in, in just a really deep way. I was seeing my own inability and I wasn't seeing God's ability to bring transformation. I was, I was just seeing my inability to do anything. And, and when that starts to happen, you, you actually leave the rest of God. You leave faith and you just see yourself. And um, I remember being at home, I would come home so many nights and just curl up a, in a ball on, on a couch and just cry. And I uh, was just, just, I didn't know why, I didn't know what was going on in my soul, but um, Melissa obviously did. And, and she just gave me the suggestion. She said, you should go out to Bethel Church in Reading and visit your friends who are, are doing the school there. And that usually would be, had been like a dream of mine. I would love to go out there. But again, I was seeing my own inability and I just said, well, I can't go out there. Like, I, we don't have any money to do that. And Melissa said, call your friend, pick some dates and book a plane ticket. God's gonna send the money. And so I said, okay, I guess if Melissa, like my wife is talking like this, then I'm, I'm gonna do it. So I called my friend, we picked some dates, and I booked a plane ticket. I paid the plane ticket on my MasterCard with no plan B. I had no idea how I was gonna pay this. And three days later, we go to the mailbox, and a friend unknowingly, just because they wanted to, sent us $1,000 for no reason. Um, God knew the reason, but they had no idea that we had given the Lord this request. And um, so we used that money to pay for the plane ticket and I had enough money to just sustain myself, actually buy food when I was in Reading. And so shortly after that, I, I board the plane, I rock up to Reading and I end up staying with my friend in their inner city apartments in a ghetto. So I have left a hectic, busy ministry setting and now I'm in a busy, hectic ministry setting. I thought I needed a, a beach. I thought I needed a retreat center. And I, I end up at this intense church culture in this inner city ghetto where there's crime and drugs. And my friends had planted a house church and the homeless were there. It was like I literally slept on a couch for the two weeks I was there. And, and we had house church there. It was just crazy and beautiful. And I was in the middle of this ghetto and my friends through this house church had literally seen in about a year and a half to two years the crime rate drop by over 50 percent to the point where the chief of police and the mayor actually had come to them and said what are you guys doing why why are things changing in this neighborhood and they said well, we're a church like we love our neighborhood we're we're sharing the gospel here we're praying for people um it's god and so the the chief of police and the mayor actually started to partner with these this small group of believers to actually see lasting transformation happen in this neighborhood. And the transformation I experienced in this neighborhood happened one night when we went out on a prayer walk. We were walking through Clay Street. It was, it was crazy, there was about 20 of us. We're all praying for the community, asking God to bring transformation there. And we came across this man named Will. And Will was a homeless man, he was drunk. And as people started to pray for him, Will started to manifest a demon. For real, like a demon. And it was the first time I'd ever encountered something like this. Um, and I, I was shocked. I was like, what's happening? And I, my friend started to explain it to me. And he said, Will has a demon, but we're not going to cast it out yet. We're going to wait until he sobers up. Um, until we can actually lead him to Jesus. That he can actually decide to give his life to Jesus. And then we'll see him set free from this demonic spirit. And I was like... Okay, great, let's do that. And so we kept praying. We were walking with this guy, Will, and Will was like singing all sorts of gospel songs that he knew. So he's belting out at the top of his lungs, amazing grace. As we continued to pray for the community and sing with Will, all of a sudden Will full on manifested this spirit and his, his body posture changed and his voice changed and his eyes literally rolled up and 
like looking up and he just his whole complexion was different and he all of a sudden was like I'm getting out of here and his voice was all gravelly and he started walking away and the leader of our group just said no you're not in the name of Jesus stay there and he stopped and he said no I'm leaving and my friend just said no I'm not talking to you spirit I'm talking to Will Will come back and all of a sudden Will came back and he started to weep. He literally started to cry because he had no idea what was happening to him. He had no idea at all. And so he, he was like, what's happening to me? And we're like, man, Jesus is going to set you free. You're actually going to be set free tonight. All the things that you've been carrying, Jesus is going to set you free from. Forgive. You're going to be new. And he was like, okay. The spirit would come back and, and torment Will. And then we command the spirit to stop. And Will would come back to his right mind. And eventually Will sobered up. And we were able to invite Will to give his life to Jesus. And when Will said, yes, I'm going to follow Jesus. Jesus, I invite you into my life. I give my life to you. I watched a man get born again. I witnessed the Spirit of God come and bear fruit in his life, actually like pour into his heart. And in a minute, Will was set free of that demonic spirit. He was literally delivered out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of the beloved Son. And then Will was standing there starting to worship, like embracing this new freedom, the new light that he had experienced. Will reached into his jacket, and we all thought he was going to pull out a gun or a knife or something, but he reached into his jacket and he pulled out a 26 or a whiskey, and he said, someone take this away from me. And we said, oh man, that was yours. You pour it out. You get rid of it. So he went over to the sink, took off the lid and dumped the whiskey down the drain and he just was experiencing freedom and in experiencing freedom he started to repent and uh, so we're, we're watching him do this and, and one of the Christians there said Will why did you do that and Will just said I heard God God told me to do it so I witnessed a man get born again and now he's a child of God and children of God know the voice of God and Will, by faith, was acting on what he heard, and it actually led him into greater freedom. It was a beautiful picture and experience. But in that moment, me, who's just been beaten up by ministry, is now in this busy ministry place, watching a man get born again. And that's when the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And the Holy Spirit just whispered to the quiet place in my heart, and he just said, Adam, I didn't bring you here to rest. I brought you here to show you that I am capable, that I'm able to heal the sick, that I'm able to cleanse the leper, I'm able to raise the dead, I'm able to see the demonized set free. And in that moment, I caught something. In that space, I just was able to leave all of that discouragement and all of my inadequacy and inability behind because I saw that he was able and I saw that he was able to do that same thing that he did in Will through my life, that I was meant to see the, the river of the kingdom of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit, pour out of my life and actually impact people around me. And, and after that experience, Melissa and I just started to see people healed and transformed. When we lay our hands on people, they would, they would be set free of things. Like, the kingdom is real, and I, and I just love this story. It's one of the most transformative and pivotal stories of my life because for the first time, I was seeing his ability, his ability to do what he said he was going to do in this book, and it just put teeth to my faith, and it started helping me to have a capacity to believe for greater things again. And, and I just want to encourage you, we as believers are meant to believe for greater things, that we're actually the product of Jesus, that the same Spirit of God that raised Christ from the dead actually dwells in us, that we're His body. So the same measure and ministry and mission that Jesus walked in, you and I are meant to walk in too, that as he, as the Father sent Jesus, Jesus also sends us. There's no lesser ministry for the Christian. It's the same ministry that Jesus did. He then sends us to do the same. So you are meant to see God's ability to see the kingdom increase, to see people healed and the demonized set free and people born again. That is who you carry. You carry him and you can carry him to the people around you.